Oh, wow. Okay. So, how is it being back in London, Chandra? Amazing. I love it. Yeah, it's so, so cool to be back. And this is your first London Orchestra. How are you feeling? Yes. London is amazing. We got to go explore yesterday. We got to see the palace, the Buckingham Palace, and the Big Ben and the London Eye that was so cool. Lovely. Right. Before we get started, somewhere is a microphone. If you have a question for these guys, please make an orderly line behind this lovely lady here. Um, and there is a one question limit per person, so don't try and go around again. Okay, but yeah, any questions, get in line. So, I have a question to start us. You guys finally met for the first time, along with your mum, in show, Sarah, on the cruise. How was that for you guys? That was like a family reunion. That was really cool. It was really cool. Yeah, but she, fun fact, she has an older brother named Chandler. Yes. Actually. Very, yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yes. It was amazing. We met on the cruise and I was like starstruck. <laughs> it was pretty cool. <laughs> Definitely very cool. For, yeah, for everyone it was super cool. So have you been watching the show before you became Judith? No. No. I have not. Not I'm allowed. watching season 9 right now, but I haven't seen 1 through 8 yet. Okay. So did you, when you first met Sarah, did you did you know who she was? I did because I've heard all about her and I knew um, she was Judith's mom and everything and I was really excited to meet her because, I don't know, I just thought it would be really cool to meet her on-screen parents and I did and it was amazing. She's so kind and so sweet and loving. She's just amazing. Well, lovely. And how is it finally seeing little butt kicker all grown up? Amazing. It's, it's so, so cool. Like, um, yeah, honestly, I, I didn't know where they were kind of going to go with Judith's character, or if they were actually going to kind of have her grow up and into into a character like this, but it's, it's awesome. It's super cool to see, um, you know, someone as incredible of an actor as Kaylee, like, playing that as well, you know? It's great. That's great. And, and she rocks the hat better than you do, I'm afraid. She does, yeah. She really does. Right, we're going to start with some questions. What is your name and where are you from? My name's Yuri, and uh, I'm from like North East. Okay, what's your question for these guys? Uh, have you ever heard of Karl Popper? Of course, uh, of course. It's, an, it's amazing, I love it. Uh, could you sing us a line? Can I sing you a line? Hey. I mean, I'm a horrible singer, um, but the Jiggy George Jar do is the farthest I'll go. Thank you. Thanks. How did you react when you first saw that one, Ryan? It was hilarious. I, mean, I remember when the first one came out, and I was going around like showing all the cast, like the video, and it was, um, it was, it was, it was hilarious. I, I went through and watched all of the other videos too, just because they're so funny. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's hilarious. I was very excited to have my own song around it. It's really cool. Cool. Okay. Next question. What's your name? Where are you from? Um, hi, I'm Ellie. I'm from Derby. Hello. And my question is, Daryl's got his dog in the show. What would be your choice of animal in the apocalypse? So if you could have any pet in the apocalypse, what would it be? A dolphin. <laughs> How are you going to keep a dolphin in Alexandria? There we go. Dolphin, so that'd be pretty cool. I don't know. <laughs> and do you think the dolphin would last against the walkers? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. I, I feel like going with the tiger. You know, Ezekiel knows what's up. He's 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 got it down pretty good. Yeah. I feel like the tiger would be pretty cool. Lovely. Good question. Thank you. <laughs> Who do we have next? Good old British politeness. Uh, my name is Josh and I'm from Sheffield. Hello. Um, Chandler, were you jealous that Matt took his storyline from the comics with Lydia? No, no, I, I, I've known Matt for years, so it's super cool like seeing actually both Max and, and Matt play uh, play like that kind of character. And, um, you know, after, after I left the show, I was always curious to see how they were going to kind of fill Carl's shoes and, and fill those storylines. It's super cool to see Kaylee fill those storylines, but it's also awesome seeing Matt kind of fill those storylines because, um, you know, again, I've just known him for so long, and it's super cool to see him kind of portray that. Uh, the storylines. I love it. Thank you. 
Kind of going on from that, Charlotte, do you think that um, Carl would have had the same reaction to Lydia and everyone if he had still been around, or...? I think so, I think, yeah, I mean, they, they seem pretty true to the comics in terms of him, like, how Henry reacted towards, um, towards everything and, and his actions around everything, so I feel like Carl would have kind of gone down the same path. And how do you think he would have reacted to a whisperer coming in and pretending to be your friend? Sure. No. Um, I'm kind of glad... I, I don't know, I think I would either make it my best friend or kill it. <laughs> now we're in between. Yeah, now we're in between. Best friend, dead. Love it or hate it. Okay. Yeah. Why is that? It's so stupid. What's your name? Where are you from? My name's Alana. I'm from Wales. Um, Hello, Alana. Just a quick question for both of you. If you want the chance to play a different character all over again, who would you choose? I honestly love Michonne's story arc. It's super, super cool. Um, if there was like a male version of Michonne, then I would be super down to try that. That'd be so cool. I feel like it would be pretty awesome to do Michonne. Cut down walkers. I don't know, cut down walkers every, every, where you turn, every hand you turn, you just, she is such a strong, independent woman. She is. Denai is amazing. She's incredible. Thank you. I mean, you have had some pretty cool scenes with that sword so far. How, how have you trained for that? Um, so before we started shooting, I had gun training, katana training, and um, horse wagon training. So I did training for the gun just to know the safety of it, just so we could be safe whenever we were using it. Same for the katana. I learned a little routine to get the feel of how to use it. So that was pretty cool. But we do it to where if anything ever happens, we're just, we're always together and we're always, they always make sure everybody is kept in a place where they can be safe. They're not, they're not just making us use the sword, they make sure everything is where it's supposed to be. And it's really good, it's really nice to have um, trainers like that and first aid kits everywhere and people to make sure that you're okay. And have you had any kind of like really scary moments on the show where you thought, wow, this is just terrifying, I can't believe it's not real? I don't think so. Not yet. Not yet. How about you, Charlie? Honestly, it's such a like relaxed environment on set that it was never like, um, you know, the walkers like in between in between shots of one like you know, smoke a cigarette or something or they'll They'll go and eat lunch and they'll take out their little like thing with the teeth on it and just, you know, eat some mashed potatoes. Um, so it's, it's really not like, like a freaky environment at all, even though we, they make it look really freaky in, in post-production and everything. But it's, um, you know, it's just, just acting. You know, we, we don't all know that it's fake, we know that what we're doing is fake and it's, um, it's pretty easy to just like snap it out of it. Yeah. Okay. Next question, what's your name? Where are you from? Hi, good morning. My name is Demelza. I'm from the Netherlands. Uh, first of all, today is my brother's birthday. He's in the back. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday! His name is Richard. Um, my question is, um, Carl, how was it for you to grow up on the set of Walking Dead? And do you have any uh, lessons or tips you can give to the little girl next to you? Yeah, um, I mean, it, it was so amazing growing up on the show. Like, it was. Um, an experience that not very many people at all get, and I, I'm, I couldn't be happier that I, that I could um, kind of take that on. And it's, um, you know, it, it was just super cool, just, especially just being able to work with all those extremely talented actors around me. Like, I wish I could go back and like, lo like go, go through all the, whole, the whole thing over again, just so I could um, just watch everyone and, and just be on that set again, because it was so, it was so amazing just working with everyone. And, um, yeah, I, mean, I would say the biggest thing to you, Keely, is just to learn as much as you can from everyone around you because everyone on that set is so, so talented and so amazing and, um, yeah, it's a great to work with. Thank you very much. Thank have you. a great day. Lovely. Who do we have next? Hello. Uh, I'm Charlotte and I'm from France, so I'm a little interested, but uh, 
idea of talking in English. Boy. Uh, I've got a question for Chandler. Um, how do you feel um, now you have leave the show and there's so much new things I mean the whisper and are you sad to just see that? Am I sad to like not be a part of it? Yeah. Um, yeah, because I, I, I was excited for those kind of storylines to um, kind of play those out, but it's it's still um, kind of like what I was saying earlier. It's still super cool to kind of see you know Matt take on those all those storylines and see Kaylee take on those storylines, and um, and since I'm off the show, I'm able to go and do other things that I've you know always wanted to do. Like for the last for eight years, from May to November out of the year, I couldn't do like anything else. And, um, there's a lot of things that I shoot between May and November, so I couldn't really audition for that many things. And um, I was pretty tied down with school and everything, and it's uh, it's really great to just kind of be able to have an open open world and just kind of do whatever I like, do whatever I want. And now I'm on a new TV show, and it's it's um, it's great. And it's it's great to be able to do other things outside of the walk. Yeah. Hey guys, thank you. Thank you. And kind of on the reverse to that, is there anyone? Like, is there anything you know from the show before, or anyone that you've met at the conventions that you think, I really wish I'd been a part of that? So, anyone that you've met at right, the conventions, or anyone that you've seen that was on the show before, yeah? Anyone you wish you'd worked with? Well, I, I would have liked to work with Andy. In a few scenes, obviously, I think it would have just been really cool to get to have that moment between a daughter and her father. It's really cool. Maybe they could just go in a field and shoot some more together. I don't know, have a picnic. <laughs> I don't know. I think that would have been really cool. So of course, he left and you came in in the same episode. Yes. Like, sorry, spoilers. Um, yeah, okay, cool. Uh, who have we got next? Hello, oh, no, my name is Stuart from Get On Down in Sussex. Hello, Stuart. Uh, my question is for Chandler. Just wondering, what, if, you, if your character was still around in the show, what words would you have for Kaylee, um, considering her new friendship with Negan? Uh, actually, you know, you know, Carl kind of had a similar relationship with Negan in the sense that um, Negan kind of admired Carl, and I think you know Negan feels the same way about, about Judith and her current stage. Um, yeah, I don't know, because it was a very weird relationship that Carl had with Negan. It was it was like because um, he, he really wanted to kill him for a long time, and then he just didn't want to kill him. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like at, at this point, if Carl was still alive in the show, then he probably would be. be he would probably be, you know going through the same kind of stuff that Judith is going through. Um, I don't think they would have much negative, um, much of a negative outlook towards Negan as you know Carl did back in season seven. Thanks very much. Thank I you. Really love both of you. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Who do we have next? To what, sorry? RJ. To RJ? Yeah. I'm so sorry, I didn't, I am not caught up on the show. Great, <laughs> Jimmy, Judith's little brother. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh. Um. You have another brother now. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, wow. Um, yeah, I have no idea. Too weird. No idea. Sorry, thank you. Pretty nice to know you're up to date, Chandler. I'm one of, I watched the first few episodes, but I, I haven't, I'm not caught up with like the rest of the season yet. I'm sorry. <laughs> right, next question. Who do we have? Hi, my name's Craig. I'm from South Wales. Uh, the question is for, for both of you. Uh, which were your favorite scenes of the film? Um, which ones did you, or you struggled with? Which ones did you not enjoy to do? Because of the storylines. Stabbing the walkers in the head. So that was probably a difficult 
Let's see, what I like to do seems where Judith and Negan are talking together. It's really fun to shoot those scenes because Judith and Negan have a special kind of chemistry that I don't think she has with anybody else. So those are really fun to shoot. Also, Jeffrey's just an awesome guy. Yes. You know, he's super, super cool. He's, yeah, yeah, he's always been an amazing guy. Um, but, uh, favorite scene would probably have to be when, in season four, when Carl and Rick were, like, mowing down all the walkers at the prison. And they came over the, over the, uh, fence and they kind of just held them back. That was so much fun. Um, so that was the night of my 14th birthday, and when you turn 14, you can then handle firearms on, on set. And so it was just so much fun. Like, for, like, the next, like, three hours, we were just unloading. It was so much fun. Um, and least favorite would probably be uh, Carl's uh, last scene with Lori. That was very sad, like three days that it took for us to shoot that. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it was not fun. Awesome, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Speaking of your relationship with Negan, how much do you think Negan has told you about everything that happened? Right. So I think he, he, I think he lies to her. I think he knows that she is smart enough to know if he's telling a lie or if he's telling the truth. I know she can figure out something. She can get to the bottom of it. She's just a really smart kid. <laughs> I, I think, I think, yeah, yeah. He, I don't think he would lie to her. He, he likes her. He likes her a lot. And she would know if he was lying to her. She would definitely she know. She would know. Lovely. Cool. Who do we have next? Is that a car or is that a junior? I think Michonne. I think Michonne would be cool. I think it would be awesome to play Michonne. That would be so sick. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Lovely. Next up. What's your name? Where are you from? Hi, my name's Melissa, I'm from Kent. Um, my question is for Katie, and I'd like to know how far are you enjoying your time? I love, I love set. It's amazing. We get to hang out behind the scenes. We get to talk. We get to chat about our lives. We get to catch up with one another. Everybody is so loving. It's just, we're like one big family. We call it the one big family. It's really cool. And set, so, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely. Okay, next up, who do we have? Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Linda from North Wales. Uh, do you think Megan has really changed, and if not, should he be unleashed on the whispers? I think he has changed. I think his relationship with you know, Carl and Judith has changed him as a person. I think he noticed how I guess 
before he died, he just wanted to see Rick spare Negan. I think because in his mind, like because Carl, at least for the first um, eight episodes of, of season eight, Carl knew that Rick was going to kill Negan, and I think Carl just wanted more than anything for Rick to not kill Negan. And so I think that that would have been, and, then, and I, th I think that whole message just carried throughout all of episode nine. And um, yeah, I think that would be like kind of the top, the top thing on, on this on this bucket list. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Thank you. Thank you very much. Who do we have next? Hi there, I'm Kristen. I'm from Scotland. Uh, questions for Jennifer. What would you um, do uh, with the head in the night? You think Carl would write on a stallion with a semi-automatic addiction all the whispers? I think that is a good, a, a good theory of what, <laughs> what would go down. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, because Carl is, is he's, um, he's a little quick to forgive, in my opinion. His, I think, um, at least, at least for me, I wouldn't have switched, like, immediately from, from not wanting, from, you know, hardcore just wanting to kill Negan, and then switching to not want to kill Negan, like, you know, so quickly. I don't think I, 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 I don't know. I think he, he's a little too too quick to forgive. So I think after a few months, he probably would have not done that. <laughs> he probably would have been more forgiving the whispers. And, um, but I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I don't know about about riding a uh, riding a stally and holding a semi-automatic. But that is a great great image to to think about. <laughs> Thank you. How do you think Carl would have reacted to seeing Enid on that pine cone? Oh man, that, that definitely would have been really, really tough for him. Um, especially just because Enid, uh, their their storylines were so intertwined, and um, they both kind of came from, you know, the the world, not from Alexandria, but from the world. And um, you know, they, they both kind of met each other at very vulnerable parts of their lives, and they you know meant a lot to each other. So I think. See if, if Carl, you know, saw saw her head on the spike. It would be, um, it would definitely be devastating. Yeah. And who is Judith going to be most upset about after seeing the heads? Got to make a choice. That's a hard decision. I mean, she. Oh. Um. Okay, there we go. It's all or nothing with you, isn't it, Kevin? <laughs> Lovely. Next question, please. Hi, I'm Scarlett, and I'm from Manchester. And my question is, do you feel like the bonds that are made to the characters in the show are also the bonds that are made offset because you basically all grew up together? Do you feel like that's the case? Because you're the only youngster on the show at the moment. Yeah. But, so, I mean, how do you feel about the show and the cast? Are they, have they become like a family to you? Yes, from the moment you meet everybody, it's immediate love on set. So, yeah, it's really, really cool. It's really, really sweet. Yeah, <sighs> yeah everyone is seriously a family on the show. It's, it's amazing. And, um, you know, I, I was the only kid for, for a while on the show and it was it, it was still just as, as welcoming and amazing amazing of a, of a cast as um you know they're, they're all just so amazing they're all they're all awesome and you know Steven's amazing and, and Norman's amazing and Andy and Denai everyone on the cast is is um they're all just very welcoming and, and um yeah they're all just such great people they're they don't treat you like a kid exactly they don't treat you like a kid they treat you like everybody else there, it's not one person over the other on set. It's really, really wonderful on set. It's, uh, it's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. I guess I must have been actually thinking about it now you've said that. When Caitlin came on the show, you must have had a weird feeling of that because every other kid that's been on the show, you know, Sophia died and Lizzie died and 
So, were you worried for Cape Men for a while? Or? I, I honestly, um, I think both me and a lot of the fans were like very skeptical of her, um, of her kind of like randomly showing up at at, at Alexandria and just being like this outsider. Um, well, she was a spy. Was that? She was a spy. Yes, definitely, definitely a spy for the wolves. Um, but, but honestly, it, it, it was so cool like seeing all the different theories and because I, I had no idea how the character was going to fit in. And um, as it went along, I, I, I kind of realized that oh, they're they're kind of just filling the shoes that Sophia um, had in the comics. And I thought that was super cool. I thought it was great because I, I thought those storylines and that that character for Carl needed to be there. There needed to be some sort of root for Carl, like going through that part of his life. Okay, cool. Next question, please. Who do we have? Hi, I'm Madison from Oxford, and I wanted to ask, in particular, Chandler, when it came to the special effects of like an eye, how long did that take, and what was it like on set when that happens? We actually, for the first, the very first time that you see it, so like when you know you hear the gunshot and the camera turns around, and I'm, I'm there. Um, that was actually CGI because we we had meant to try and put in uh, put in the prosthetic and everything, but we ran out of time, so they just put blood all around my eye and um, and then just put put it all in digitally. But then every single shot after that, they um, actually put on like a prosthetic and everything, and that honestly didn't take too long. They just put like we were on set and they just like threw it on my face and we just did it. Um, and then every time after that, when uh, you know in, in season seven when Carl takes off the bandage and he reveals it to Negan, that took maybe like an hour and a half, a couple of hours, and I put it on every day for her, probably like four or five days, and I would just um, I would just go to hair and makeup, then I would just fall asleep while they put it on. It was great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Lovely. Next question, please. Who do we have? Hi, I'm Shaw from Sorry. I, mean, I, I think he would, he would have a pretty similar relationship with Negan because of, of um, basically of, of really just how he felt towards Negan in, in season seven and season eight. I, I think they had a unique relationship that um, you know Carl really did want to kill him for a while, and then he kind of realized that oh, people can change, people can become better, and I think that Carl would be in a similar situation as Judith, and I think they would both kind of be. Um, both going to be, be you know, friends with, with Negan. Thank, yeah, thank you. you. Do you think Carl could be friends with Alpha? No. No, no definitely not. How about Judith? If, Judith when, if when Judith meets Alpha, how is she going to be with her? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't think... I don't think Judith is going to have a connection with Alpha. I think she's just going to try and be like everybody else, try and take her out. I don't know if you could be friends with Alpha. She's pretty... Ugh. She's, she's pretty scary. <laughs> I think that is the one scene I want to see now, is Judith taking out Alpha. That would be amazing. <laughs> okay, next question, please. Hi. With so many new families in The Walking Dead and children, if you could be the son and daughter of any of the parents, who would it be and why? I think Carol and Ezekiel. Those would be some solid parents right there. Carol and Ezekiel. You don't want to be Carol's kid. Oh, just, that's, that's true. You just die. Yeah. It's it's that's very true. That is very true. But I feel like they're, they're good. I thought they were good parents. I don't think they're good parents. But, but you'd be curious to die. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was just wondering if, um, on those last 
final scenes that Paul had that was so emotional, especially when he was saying goodbye to Judith and as we said, the significance of passing on the path. Do you think he ever had an inkling that Judith was actually Shades? Um, I, you know, I, I think it's, it's kind of like, like Rick. I think he kind of just knew that um, that it was, it was a pretty good possibility of just, because I, um, I, I, I think when he would think about in the past of how Shane was with his, his mother, I think that he would, he kind of connected the dots and, and figured that, you know, he, that Judith was probably Shane's. Um, and it, it's, you know, it still doesn't matter, matter to him because he, he was still going to love her all the same. And Do you think uh, she's still deserving of that? Oh, for sure, for sure. I mean, I mean, she's still, you know, she still, she still is Rick's daughter, even if she isn't biologically her daughter. Yeah. I think that's something the show really does highlight: is that it's not necessarily blood that is important. It's it's who you love and who takes care of you. So exactly. Yeah. I mean, like I would say, Glenn is part of that family. You know, Michonne is part of that family. Everyone is a, is a collectively a part of, of that family. Thank you. Who do we have next? Hi, I'm Ellie from Cornwall. I was just wondering if you think that things would be different for both of your characters if both Shane and Laurie were still alive. We'd be dead if Shane was still alive. <laughs> we did a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I so, I mean, the governor, he, he would have definitely got us killed at the governor. 100%. 100%. Yeah, he would have had like all of us like storm the the a storm would marine and we all would have died. No, I think I agree. I think Rick and Sh not Rick and Shane, Lori and Shane are very different from Rick and Michelle. I think Rick and Michelle are they they're very different parents. I think than Lori and Shane would be. I think Rick and Michelle are. We're, we are their, we're their children. I think we'll always be their children. I think we were always their children, so I don't know. Yeah, both of them are just far more made for that world than, yes. than at least, um, at, at least Lori and Chain were, you know? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really good question. Who do we have next? Stephanie from Stoke. Um, my question is to Chandler. Um, we've seen several characters come back in flashback form. Would you ever do a flashback of your last year too? Great. Yeah, it'd be a lot of fun. I'm super down. Yeah, that would be awesome. Thank you. Super long time. Hold on. Hi, hi, hi. Um, if you could bring any character back to life, who would it be and why? you bring back? Glenn. Glenn. Oh, 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 oh. That's fine. No, it's fine. It's fine. Um, well, I haven't watched season one through eight, so I'm not really sure. Is that the same Glenn? Glenn. There we go. Honestly, I really liked the, um, I, don't, I don't know if you guys remember, but in season, the trailer for season five, um, they kind of edited it to mislead that the people from Terminus were gonna come with, like, join the group and go to Washington together to try and, you know, cure the disease. Um, and I really liked that storyline. I was like, wow, that, that actually sounds awesome. I would love to watch a season of that. And then they died in like episode two. So I think it would be kind of cool to bring Gareth back and to see kind of his story arc changing to this kind of completely different person and, and, and to not you know be a cannibal. I think it'd be really really cool. I don't know. Not the right answer at all, but you guys wanted to hear. It. I'm sorry, but I think it'd be cool. Carl. Later. <laughs> Carl. I think it would be really cool if Judith had a, an older brother to look up to. She's the older child now, so. But you wouldn't have her. It's <laughs> maybe I would. I don't know. But even though if I didn't have the hat, I, we still have. We still have the. I mean, the hat represents our 
friendly. So I think even if the hat, if it, even if I didn't have the hat, we would still be. Explain this. We would still. The family that would be. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. Wouldn't change anything about the relationship. But, yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. Do we have a next question, or are you just sitting on the phone? Oh, okay, okay. Um, I'm gonna. We don't. Oh, lovely. Uh, right. Do you have any questions for Charlie? I don't. No, I don't. Well, I think we're gonna leave it there because we've only got a couple of minutes left. Unless anyone has one final question. Yes, go on then. Don't be scared. Just yell it out. Come on up. Love your costume, by the way. Yes. It's amazing. Cheese from the public, which cheese from the fall, I do know you're the sun. Wow. See, now that's not what you need to ask more questions. Wow. Wow. <laughs> um. I mean. <laughs> I, I think I think Carl is probably Rick's son. <laughs> um. I would hope so. I don't know. Yes. Yes. See, we now have to know how long did um, Shane and Rick know each other before? Because they knew each other a long time. Yeah, it was years. It was, it was, years. It was definitely yeah. They've been partners. You have completely rewritten the show here. Seriously, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, it was Sophia. Well, I mean, is everybody? This, this is madness. <laughs> That's a really good question. Well, well, I mean, cool. Right, we are going to wind it up there, ladies and gentlemen. Can we have a massive round of applause?